Hi and welcome back to the series on the cash conversion cycle. Today we will talk about the days payable outstanding, which is the last component on how to calculate the cash conversion cycle. The days payable outstanding are the number of days it takes for a company to pay its creditors. And the creditors could be its vendors, suppliers, or financiers. And the calculation we will go into later but the theory behind it is that you will take the accounts payable and again we will take the average amounts payable during that time period and divide it by cost of goods sold times the number of days we're looking at. Hey mate, but how can you use it in real life? Well if you want to interpret the days payables outstanding you notice that when you have a high days payables outstanding that it's theoretically better because you efficiently manage your payables and you keep more money inside the company, meaning you retain cash. However, on the flip side, you also hurt your relationship with your suppliers because if you don't pay, they will become angry over time and therefore you have to find a way to have a high DPO without angering your suppliers. A low DPO on the other side is bad from a financial standpoint, because that means that you will pay companies very quickly, which means you will have a lot of cash outflow without a lot of money coming in. But again, there is a good side to it because you will have a good relationship with your suppliers and may even get discounts when you pay early. Here we have a comparison. General Electric has a DPO of 106 and Microsoft has a DPO of 83. And you can see that these numbers are very again when you look at different industries let's get into the best part the excel spreadsheet here we are back at the spreadsheet in excel and we're almost done to being able to calculate the cash conversion cycle we only need the days payable outstanding and then we can move on to the last step so how do we calculate the days payable outstanding just as before we take an average in this case of the accounts payable and um, I sourced this data again from an online website just like this we can drag these numbers over and then the final step to calculate the days payable outstanding is to divide the average accounts payable by cost of goods sold times 365 and there we go we have a days payable outstanding number of 94 and uh, 97 sorry <laughs> which means that the company on average takes 97 days to pay its suppliers on the other side if you compare this to how much time they grant their customers or others to pay them, there is a huge difference. They take much more time paying money than receiving money, which is typically a good thing. And now that we have all of these numbers, the day's inventory outstanding, the day's sales outstanding, and the day's payables outstanding, we can calculate the cash conversion cycle in the next video.